is one of our uh, students, Hazira, and she's going to talk about intercultural communication. intercultural communication through cultural exchanges is important, how it can be done, and in the different settings which I were in, and through the examples that I will give. So, the context of this talk is my year abroad in three different countries, and for those of you who are groaning, no, this is not going to be equal love. It's going to be a different thing entirely. So, what did I do? I spent July to December of 2009 in India for a cultural immersion, January to May in the US for my student exchange program, and also after that I went on a summer program to Mexico, so there were three very different, very con contrasting countries. So in India, I was working with an NGO that actually worked with street children, and even in the NGO itself, we had volunteers from a variety of backgrounds. We had people from Germany, we had people from America, we had people from even India themselves. So I was working with a center, and I was talking to the teacher about what kind of activities did she want me to do with the children. And she told me, hmm, maybe you can do something related to culture because, you know, appreciation of culture is lacking. So I came up with an idea to actually create a jigsaw puzzle based on cultural monuments around India. And the children really had fun trying to put the pieces together and figuring out what the places are highlighted were. And one of the things, I was trying to push the boundaries somewhat. I was thinking, how do I teach culture as such? So I came up with a syllabus to teach Singaporean culture. And I know this is ironic because a lot of people say Singaporean culture. Singapore does not have a culture of what, what kind of Singaporean culture are you talking about? So I actually came up with a presentation on the different, on a mixture, on a confluence of cultures that we have in Singapore. And surprisingly, it worked really well. And the most interesting, the, the, the aspect of the lesson that the children really enjoyed was a dance performance which my friends and I did based on four different cultural songs. So we had a Malay song, a Chinese song, an Indian song, and a song about Singapore. So you know, it was very strange because the children really loved it. And I brought the same lesson over to an NGO I was volunteering in Mexico. And the same thing happened. I had like fantastic slides about like, you know, pictures of Singapore. But they didn't really, they, they liked it. They were like, oh, okay. But when the dance beat came about, all of them started to get up and I started dancing. Because so, so for me, I started thinking, maybe, you know, dance is something that is so um, basic. Like you don't, for some people, they're like, oh, how do I share about my culture? I don't speak Hindi or I don't speak Spanish. I can't do it. But, you know, dance is such a fundamental thing. And it actually brings... These three different cultures that I, that I was experiencing, Singaporean culture, um, Mexican culture, and Indian culture together. So right after my five months in India, I flew to the US, and at first I thought, oh my god, what a big mistake. Because, you know, the dominant interpretation is that, oh, you know, in America there's no culture, or like, the culture you see is Hollywood culture. So I was feeling like, oh no, you know, I, I, I can't get my cup of tea right outside my school gates anymore, or there'll be no cows passing by the road, you know. It just becomes so natural to me after five months. But... You know, in one of my classes, an anthropology class, right, my lecturer actually introduced to us that there were diverse cultures in the US, including Native American culture, and they were very vocal by expressing themselves. So you had YouTube clips where actually recited poetry on their culture. So for my term project, I thought, hmm, let's bring a bit of Singapore into my class. So I did a project on the concept of home, and I got pictures from my friends who were overseas at that time in countries like Pakistan, Sweden, and the US, and I juxtaposed it with the song Home by Kit Chan, which is sang during National Day parades in Singapore. So I actually had a slide with, uh, with the songs and pictures about how these Singaporeans have made their home in the US or whichever countries they were in. And one of the most interesting aspects of that presentation was when I had to explain what Singlish was to my American classmates. So I went, oh, okay, an example would be like, what lah, you don't understand me, man? And the looks on their faces, <laughs> when I told them, yes, it's still English, was really, really priceless. So coming from there, I decided, hmm, maybe I need to stretch my horizons a bit. So I applied for a summer school in Mexico. And in Mexico, we had really intensive Spanish classes, four hours a day, five days a week. So it was really intense. And I was like, oh my God, how do I put up with this? And then when I was going through the classes, I realized they're actually very creative. So we had conversation classes, but they were conducted in a very culturally um, 
relevant context. So we had classes on um, pinata making, and we got to smash it after that. And we also had um, cultural icons, like you know, day of the day icons. So I was learning Spanish through interaction with. I was learning Spanish through interaction with Mexican culture, and it was really interesting because one of the lessons that we had, right, my teacher, I was like, how do we again? How do we bring Singapore into this cultural exchange? And we were talking about food. So my teacher was going on about like the different Mexican food that you can have and they're really delicious. So I was, she was trying to ask us, so what kind of food do you like in Singapore? And I was like, oh, my favorite food in Singapore, soap tulang, which is like red marrow bone soup, right? And she was really perplexed. She was like, what? You suck marrow from a bone? So for me, that was really interesting because, you know, I had to do it all in Spanish. I had to explain it in Spanish. And the teacher was like, this is really something that I've never experienced. So to conclude, right, I feel that intercultural communication doesn't necessarily mean that you have to speak a particular language or you have to do things in a particular way. There are many different ways in which you can explore how you can actually interact with different cultures and bring your own culture into a different setting. And the most important thing for me, I went overseas to these three different countries to learn and immerse myself in a new culture. And I came back knowing more about my own Singaporean culture. Thank you.